I think the circle's mission of welcoming and being inclusive of community is widely on display. We haven't had a chance to meet all of you, and we want to do that, but have had great conversations, and kudos to Scott and the team, and Jamie and Kamatara. We share a past of being English teachers, and Gina and Courtney, and Sarah, we also met Mindy, and Jack, and Chris, just a sampling, and I cannot wait to be able to call out all of your names. Um, when Scott and I got to know one another, it was clear in New Orleans and moving forward that we at AARP Foundation uh, share mission with you. And that in fact, Circles USA and AARP Foundation are actually kindred spirits. And I know that because when you listen and hear about the words that we each use to talk about our work, uh, there are many similarities. Community, connection, grassroots action volunteer support and meaning, financial stability, and transformation. We share, I think, the same fundamental motivation to improve the world by intentionally and systematically building more livable communities. And livable, healthy communities are communities that are inclusive of all people across all identity lenses and across the economic spectrum. We both seek to help by offering a hand up, and we both recognize that we all do better in this nation when everyone in our community does better. We both realize that volunteers are a rich and in many cases untapped national resource. For example, at AARP Foundation, two of our largest and most effective programs, AARP Foundation Tax Aid and AARP Foundation Experience Corps, are fueled by the dedication of thousands upon thousands of volunteers and communities across our country, who by giving of their time and of their rich life experiences, further strengthen, strengthen their own connection to communities, regain a sense of purpose for themselves, and have demonstrable evidence-based improvements in their own quality of life. You are committed to building thriving networks, and we are too. Many of AARP Foundation's workforce initiatives offer networking solutions for unemployed or underemployed adults who are 50 and older. Opportunities for them to make the kinds of connections that will enable them to com compete much more effectively for today's in-demand jobs. And in virtually every program and service that we offer or that we support or advance, we network and build strategic collaborations with other organizations across multiple sectors to have a greater collective impact on behalf of older adults who aspire to financial stability. So although we may not call it the exact same thing, we're both about building circles, about empowering communities, about bringing everyone into supportive and meaningful lifespan connections. At the foundation, we've identified two pillars that guide everything that we do, helping older adults increase economic opportunity and helping them build and maintain social connections. These two goals, as you hear them, you can hear that they're intimately linked. We find many times that by bolstering one pillar, we're actually having a positive impact on the other pillar as well. In our work to overcome poverty, we treat the people we work with not as problems, that need solving, but as vital assets to their communities and to their families. Our programs focus on the social determinants of health, the conditions in which people, as you know, live, work, and grow, that either encourage well-being or are detrimental to it. But we always, at the foundation, remember that poverty is the ultimate social determinant of health and well-being, and that addressing poverty is, in fact, the critical key. That's why, and we shared my, my team and I with Scott and Sarah last night, we admire your model so much and all that you're working together to achieve. Your emphasis on the critical importance of one-to-one -one human connection, the way you champion the notion that everyone has something to learn and everyone has something to offer. To be teacher is to be learner, to be learner is to be teacher. Yours is a fight for equity in your communities, and so is ours. We both strive to end poverty and fight all the forms of discrimination 
that provide a breeding ground for poverty, working to increase inclusion and in financial health in communities where we serve. It's no secret that centuries of discrimination and denial of opportunity on the grounds of race and other identities have created glaring disparities that continue to plague us. We at AARP Foundation fight these disparities by virtue of who we serve and where we serve, both in communities and also in the courts across the nation. We also face the stubborn persistence of age discrimination in the work that we do at AARP Foundation. It makes it very much harder for older adults to thrive. Qualified, experienced, and dedicated as they are, it makes it hard for people to be hired or to continue to keep working. You know, think about it. If you have lost a job, you're fired or you're removed from a full-time job at age 50, and given longevity increases, you might live until you're 90 or 90 plus. That's a recipe for long-term deprivation. Age discrimination is highly consequential. It's a problem that our legal advocacy team at AARP Foundation battles every day. This is a matter of fundamental fairness. It's a high stakes issue when it comes to economic security for the growing population of older adults in our nation. And not addressing it is another recipe for increasing poverty in communities. I know and am thrilled to continue to hear from Scott and the team that a quarter of those you serve are already adults 50 or older. The need in this segment of the population is great and growing, but it is a need that society really very often overlooks. You emphasize, and Scott just walked us through again, the very real issue problem or challenge of the cliff effect, and this echoes in our work as well. We often highlight the fact that 37 million adults age 50 and older in our nation are just one unexpected life event from slipping into financial hardship because, as we know, life doesn't always go as planned. Whether that means falling below the poverty line or continuing to teeter on the brink of it. And as you so often point out, that one life event can actually be a pay increase that moves someone out of the eligibility for critically important safety net programs, ironically bringing individuals and their families closer to hardship. But I see in my work, and I'm sure you do as well in your circles, such cliffs in the issues that older adults face. Job loss is a cliff. Higher health care costs as you age is a cliff. Losing a spouse or becoming separated from friends and family is another cliff. When it comes down to it, the fact that life doesn't go as planned is a cliff that we all need to keep in mind. That's why we all in our lives need circles of support. In the work we do at AARP Foundation, we confront some misconceptions about the challenges older adults face. Many in the public still believe that older adults are able to meet all of their essentials with their own resources bolstered by support from Social Security and from Medicare. For millions of seniors, this just isn't true. Many older adults find themselves worrying about things, such as whether they're able to keep the lights on, as well as pay for their prescriptions, or put food on the table. And they're facing impossible choices, as you know. Here's another important or key fact. In the United States, 13.2 million older adults are working each and every day full time and still struggling to meet their basic essentials, officially classified as low income. Imagine having to give up on the American dream at a time in your life when you had hoped to be reaping the benefits of your life well lived. Instead, imagine your later years having turned out to be a time of deprivation, of dreaming only of making it to tomorrow, to the next day, and a time of growing fear. Your collective mission shows that you understand intimately how poverty feeds on itself, that problems like inadequate housing and food insecurity combine 
to make the bad even worse. And many older adults face additional challenges, mobility challenges, for example, or cognitive decline and chronic health problems or comorbidity. Ironically, even as medical and nutritional advances have added years to our lives, we face the prospect that longer lives could become poorer lives. In fact, US Census data shows us that people age 65 and over were the only group to experience an increase in the number of people living in poverty. You know this, poverty is expensive. Senior poverty has its own specific costs. The upfront expenses of poverty, including paying more for food and less nutritional food at that because you live in a food desert, buying your food, for example, at convenience stores. They also include having to rely on risky payday loans or financing vehicles to make it through the end of the month. Older adults also pay in the form of poor health and escalating medical expenses. For example, we know that 63% of low-income seniors choose to pay for food instead of medical care. And of course, those there again is the impossible choice because food's important and food is medicine, but medical care is important as well. Senior poverty is also expensive for families who are more likely to have to provide unpaid caregiving and also help with expenses. In fact, more than 90% of family caregivers become financial caregivers as well. Finally, Senior poverty is expensive for all of us. Health problems are significantly more common among adults age 65 and older who have an annual income of less than $15,000. And we all pay in the form of rising health care costs, increased pressure on our safety net programs, and fragmented communities. Moreover, poverty also contributes to social isolation, which has enormously negative health effects. Studies show that for older adults, especially, prolonged social isolation is worse for health than obesity, and it's been found that prolonged social isolation is the health equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes each and every day. In fact, our colleagues at AARP's Public Policy Institute found that social isolation costs Medicare about $7 billion in additional spending on an annual basis. Where we're gathered here in South Carolina, the cost is estimated to be about $120 million in increased spending due to social isolation. Beyond these serious health care and health concerns, senior poverty takes out of circulation so many who have so much to continue to contribute to our communities. When older adults are not embraced in communities, are not given the opportunity to share their gifts, talents, and contributions, we are all poorer. And that, of course, is where you at Circles USA and we at AARP Foundation come in. Your model is helping break the poverty cycle. Let me share a few more specific examples that Scott alluded to of how AARP Foundation is fighting senior poverty. I'm sure much of it sounds familiar, and as I mentioned some of our tools and programs, please know that they are accessible and available to all of you, and we want you um, to, to use the work and models that we've developed. At the Foundation, we're keenly focused on human-centered design, as you are where every day we use empathy and experimentation to be sure that we truly understand people's needs, uncover creative insights with them, and find new solutions with them to address complex issues. We have programs of our own that we're looking to scale even more, and we're equally committed to finding great solutions and programs that exist in communities across the nation and to support and advance those solutions as well. Achieving scale and impact requires the kind of collaboration that is creative, sometimes unorthodox, and often unexpected. And this reminds me of a phrase that you use. Scott, we didn't talk about this yet, but I love it. Radical collaboration. And as you say, your poverty reduction labs bring community leaders together 
and an environment of radical collaboration. To me, that term is so important because don't you find sometimes in your work and in your lives that people think collaboration solves problems and they believe it's just you get a bunch of people together or organizations and simply stir and something good will happen. But radical collaboration is something different. The very phrase says there's accountability, there's newness, there's pushing of boundaries together and as organizations. I really admire that boldness that determination to stop managing poverty and instead work to reduce it outright, commit to your 10% goal to solve it. Radical collaboration can scale effective solutions by finding answers to these stubbornly persistent and challenging and complex social questions and problems. How do you retain direct service but scale to more participants and users? How do you spread the message that working on senior poverty is a worthwhile endeavor for startup organizations and tech companies? How do you develop a blueprint for multi-generational services? We are all working with limited resources. So radical collaboration enables us to invest those resources where they will have the greatest, most sustainable impact. One solution that has had a really measurable impact for more than 50 years is our Job Placement Senior Community Service Employment Program, or as we call it, CSEP. This program puts unemployed older adults back to work through temporary subsidized community service jobs that typically lead to full-time unsubsidized work and employment. Last year alone, some 3,600 older adults found jobs through our CSEP work and communities benefit as well. AARP Foundation CSEP participants contribute over 5.5 million hours of community service, valued at over $120 million a year to food banks, human service agencies, Sarah, to your agency, to senior centers, to daycare centers, schools, and a wide range of municipal and community service and nonprofits. All told, in 2018, our workforce programs generated more than $123 million in new income for our program participants. And this includes CSEP and our Back to Work 50 Plus program, which helps long-term unemployed older adults get back into the workforce through workshops and coaching and peer support. Sounds familiar, given the work that you're doing. In addition to training, we help connect participants with employers who are looking for the kind of dedication and experience older workers bring. Moreover, as we all, moreover, as we all know, entrepreneurship is a dynamic and growing sector in all of our communities. So we are opening up pathways to entrepreneurship for low-income older adults through a new program we designed and launched called Work For Yourself at 50 Plus. Human-centered design is a thread that runs through everything that we do in all of our programs at AARP Foundation. And that also includes thinking through the power of technology to help older adults who are living in or on the edge of poverty develop the tools and habits that ensure they continue to retain their own agency. So let me briefly touch on some of the newer tools that we've developed and launched that might prove useful to all of you in your work in circles. At AARP Foundation, we believe that social connections are the new frontier in aging. And to help cross that frontier, a couple of years ago, we spearheaded a program, an online tool called connect to effect You can find it at connecttoeffect.org. This resource source helps older adults, but also organizations or communities begin to thrive, to build the connections we all need to thrive. And it launched in 2017, and almost 100,000 people have completed a very short online isolation assessment tool that is the centerpiece of our work on connect to effect And you can either complete this for yourself or on behalf of a loved one. I have to tell you, now that I know so much about the ill effects of isolation, I very regularly check myself on that assessment tool to be sure that I'm doing the work needed to maintain healthy connections, to maintain my health as well. And then once you know where you are, you can plug in your zip code 
and be connected to community resources in your own community. So I don't know, Emily, Hillary, Scott and others, I was thinking community resources are circles too. So we need to think about ways that we're connecting your work on our, and Jamie, on our Connect to Effect uh, website. Another contributor to isolation, you all know this, and you, I think, struggle with it in some of your communities, is transportation options. Access to affordable, reliable transportation to get to work and to get to social events and to get to community resources. And so we recently um, participated and supported a research project that took, took an in-depth look at ride-hailing apps and the increase of them in communities and whether or not providing free ride-hailing opportunities to low-income older adults would allow them to get to their medical appointments, but also allow them to go grocery shopping, to be able to go out and have a cup of coffee with a friend without having to rely on, on someone else. And we entered into this with United Healthcare and um, the University of Southern California. And the, the outcome was interesting. First of all, 86% of the participants all participants were offered a phone concierge service. So we started with the premise that maybe these our older adults would need to call someone on the phone to access ride hailing rather than use the app. Guess what the outcome was? 86% of older adults, once taught how to use the apps, use the app consistently. So it was myth busting around older adults and technology. And 90% of the participants reported that they improved their quality of daily living as a result of having access to reliable transportation. Now, again, I don't think that's a surprise, but it certainly is an echo call to leaders across our nation to be sure that we're looking at transportation infrastructures and new models of transportation as key to our work in poverty reduction. We know that technology should never be a substitute for human connection and genuine human connection. That's the lifeblood of your model and of the work we do at AARP Foundation. But technology can and must be a valuable tool for replication and for scale. So just this year, Emily Allen and her team have introduced a, a whole slew of new programs and services that rely on technology to increase connection and economic opportunity, and I, I just want to talk about a couple. Another tool is called Connected Communities, where we're bringing voice-enabled or voice-activated technology into the apartments of re older adult residents of affordable housing communities. The goal is not just safety, or information sharing, but the goal is active prompting so that the residents engage with one another in person. In the communities who have adopted Connected Communities, the program has been such a hit that residents have now formed regular meetup groups where they share tips and new uses for their voice activated device, and residents who didn't interact with their neighbors previously have developed new relationships and important connections. They gather to compete in trivia competitions, to listen to music, and to dis discover new skills they found on their device that are enhancing their daily living. ARP Foundation, we conducted baseline and follow-up surveys. Evidence is important to us as it's important to you to determine the level of social support that senior housing residents perceived and actually received. And among the residents who participated in our program, we tracked measurable increases in social interaction. Again, technology remains an important tool. In addition, Emily and her team have two new, uh, I would call them FinTech, financial solutions that are aimed at savings and planning, which we know um, education in these areas is so important for financial resilience. One is called Self Saver, and the other tool is called My Savings Jar, both you can find out about on our website at aarpfoundation.org. These tools are helping older adults develop a savings habit and be more successful entrepreneurs through the use of financial technology. And again, some myth busting is really important here. It's just not true, we know at AARP Foundation, that older adults are hesitant to use technology-based programs. Teach them the ropes and they're off and running. So that was just a small sampling of what my colleagues and I are engaged in as we're building a future without senior poverty 
at AARP Foundation. And I'm happy to elaborate when I talk with Scott now about the work that we're doing in more depth or to answer questions that you have. A lot of our work and our success has come from picking the right organizations with whom we collaborate to maximize impact. Circles of support, indeed. Uh, the work that you're doing and that we're doing, that we're doing together in communities across this nation is important work, so thank you. It's good work. We're right there with you, I want you to know, radically collaborating our way to better communities and to a better world. Thanks for having AARP Foundation with you today. Thank you, Lisa.